This is Kerry Artek with Wicked Signal with another video analysis, this one on Caterpillar Incorporated, symbol C-A-T. If you don't know anything about Caterpillar, I'm sure you do, but they are a Fortune 100 company uh, in the U.S. They are the world's largest construction equipment manufacturer. Uh, they design, develop, engineer, manufacture, market, and sell machinery, engines, financial products, and insurance to customers uh, via a worldwide dealer network. And that's all I'm going to say in terms of the Wikipedia write-up on <laughs> uh, Caterpillar. Uh, I am going to be showing you actually some important chart formations here in Caterpillar uh, that will uh, that represent a ceiling of resistance that can actually contain buying in the later year, actually, but at least in the early first quarter that we're in right now uh, for the next month or two. I'm going to show you all this in a moment. Before I jump into the chart, please tell your investor or trader friends uh, to go to wickedsignal.com, fill out the free subscription form, first name, last name, email address, and you or they will receive an email each and every time a new video analysis is ready for viewing. I'm trying to get two or three out of these of these out a week. Um, but um, in any event, I won't fill your email inbox with all kinds of marketing uh, pitches, and I will not share your uh, personal contact information with anyone outside of the organization. So let's start with Caterpillar. This is really a 30-year chart, uh, and it's a weekly bar chart, by the way. All the charts I'm showing you will be the same weekly bar chart in various forms, some zoomed in. Um, and uh, just, just want to let you know that this was uh, recorded Monday, January 11th, 2021. Uh, first, I'll just show you some of the extremes over the last, you know, 10 years or so. Uh, you've got the financial crisis low of 21,771, 2011, 116.55. We backed off to 56,36, a 50% break, essentially, by 2016 over that uh, you know, five-year period of time, rallied to 173.24 in 2018, broke another 50%, really, 87 half, uh, the COVID low of 2020, and most recently put out an all-time high of 197.37, and that was just a couple of weeks ago. And so uh, what I'm going to show you, I'm going to zoom in on an area here over the last four years or so, represented by that red square, and uh, this is what you're what you see then. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. I'll show you the fact that the market did put out a nice, meaningful buy signal, at least what I'd call a midterm buy signal in scope uh, in late August by closing above this channel formation, then at 138.86. And now it's actually testing a much more meaningful channel structure. I say much more meaningful because much more meaningful because it includes time that goes back five, six, seven years uh, in scope, whereas that previous channel was really a three-year descending channel top. We are now testing a five to seven-year channel top. Uh, we've pushed to new highs, yes, but as you can see, uh, this market is testing a significant zone of resistance at 195.73 this week, the week of Monday, January 11th. That rises ever so gradually to 196.31 four weeks later, the week of Monday, February 8th. As per usual, you can subtract those two numbers out, divide by four, and you'll have that exact channel top each and every week in between. This is a formation that can contain quarterly buying pressures. I'd like to say annual, perhaps. I mean, that is a possibility. But for right now, I'm comfortable with, you know, kind of a buying into February trade. Uh, from here, we can back off into the 160s. You can, you can see a new channel bottom right now at 161.05 this week, rises to 168 even that first week of February. I do think that this market is, is uh, susceptible to falling back to that area. Over the next, I don't know, three to five weeks, a couple of months, uh, you know, obviously this is uh, this formation is rising at a pretty good clip, and it would actually represent our sell signal to the downside into later year if we were to settle below this rising channel structure. But for those of you who trade the big picture, uh, I'm talking like you know through 2021, this is a significant test right now in the 195.73 area or that formation. It is a zone, and there's a variety of ways of playing this. If you're long Caterpillar right now, and if you're long sort of into later 2021, I think this is an area you may consider liquidating that long position and, and uh, kind of a wait and see 
uh, because from here this market could back uh, because from here this market could back off not only into the 160s but even potentially lower as we continue into later year. This is good call selling territory, put buying territory, whether it's for the next three to five weeks or next three to five months. Um, it is a significant pivot point into later 2021 because holding below it, this market can rotate south into later 2021. Um, I'm going to show you uh, what if, though, we do close above this 195.73 formation. And, you know, because this is such a long-term area, I like to see these formations, and I don't have this actually in front of me. I'll let you do the math. It's quite easily. Take 195.73 times 1%, which would be, you know, 1.95 beyond 195.73. So 1.95 you know, I'll let you do that math. That should be 197.60. And I'm putting that out there is because if on Friday we close above 195.73 by at least a 1% margin, in other words, that uh, 197 and change mark I just mentioned, uh, then we have a, a, a clear buy signal, follow through strength, um, you know, into, uh, I actually think through the first quarter, I'm going to show you what that target is in a moment. Um, but let's take a look at this chart once again, and I'm just going to show you kind of a wave patterns that could play out. You know, we had one uh, back in, uh, you know, that A minus B, and these are the levels that I showed you before. I believe that was the 2011 high against the 2016 low. So if you take A minus B and then just merely flip it on its head and add it to A, a full swing to the upside, that's 176.74. And we rallied to within three points of that uh, back in 2018. That was the 2018 high of that. Uh, back in 2018, that was the 2018 high before backing off. We're obviously above it now. I don't have a buy signal because of that fact, uh, but I'm just showing you uh, the pattern that could play out because you could do the same sort of A, B pattern with regard to the 2018 high against the 2020 low. I'm just calling them C, D. So C minus D plus C, that same sort of uh you know, turning it over entirely on its head, if you will, a full wave to the upside beyond C is 258.98. And so I think that 258.98 uh, does become a realistic target if we close above 195.73 uh, by at least a 1% margin. And once again, that would be 1.95 plus 195.73. Uh, that's going to be 197. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's going to be 197. Yeah, I'm doing that in my head. Um, and it is an important number, you know, because if we close at 196.10 on Friday, that's not close enough. I mean, can you act on it? Sure. Uh, but I think you need to be uh, nimble uh, in terms of your risk management. You need to be open for the possibility of, um, you know, the market backing off the following day. And also, by the way, I've had questions, you know, why do I have to wait until Friday? You really don't. I mean, the same formation will show up on a daily chart. So you could, uh, if you if we settled above that weekly channel top on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of whatever week we're talking about, by at least a 1% margin, that is a good go with buy signal. If you're a scale trader, you could buy a third, you could buy half. I do think it, it deserves then uh, to wait until the end of the week. Fridays always have a certain degree of closure and finality on these signals, and then you could load up on the rest at the end of the week. At the end of the week, I mean, you obviously would probably have your own risk management trade execution strategy, uh, but I do like to throw out the one percent violation uh, because if we closed at one ninety six ten or one ninety six fifty, no reason to get overly excited about that. It is I like the analogy of the rubber band closing at one ninety six ten. The rubber band is stretching. You know, closing at above 197.68, which I believe is the 1% violation of 195.73, the rubber band snaps. And we now have sort of a, of a, of a go with buy signal that I think should play out. I'm going to say, you know, that, that, could take, that could take three to five months. That could take well into 2021, depending on what occurs on the way up. Uh, but at some point in, in this year, 2021, I would say 258.98 would become a realistic target. 
And, uh, you know, that is about a, what is it? I'm going to just guess that that's about a 25 to 30% rally. Guess that that's about a 25 to 30% rally from a present price levels. So that's a nice rally. This would be a nice stock to hold in your portfolio, in my opinion, if we get that buy signal. But if not, uh, this is a pivot point. We're below it. It is a ceiling of resistance. It can contain buying into uh, the later first quarter, possibly into later year. From here, we could certainly back off into the 160s, as shown in the previous slide, and uh, even possibly lower as we continue into later 2021. So um, I'm just going to be giving you the, this information. There's not a buy signal in effect. There's not a sell signal in effect. I'll let you do with it as you may. There would be a buy signal if we close clearly above 195.73 at the end of this week by at least a 1% margin or above that formation wherever it may be between now and early February by at least a 1% margin. Until then, this market can show overbought trade and fall south into later Q1, possibly into later year. And I this particular wicked signal video on Caterpillar Inc.